Hello, my name is Pawan and I welcome you once again to my YouTube channel. Thanks to your support, I've been posting guitar lessons for popular Bollywood songs for uh, around three years now. And during this period, I've also answered a lot of questions, uh, uh, technical questions, call requests and whatnot. But there is one question which uh, kind of keeps uh, coming back to me, and that is, how do you find the key of a song? Now, if you recall, uh, uh, you might have seen some of my lessons that I've posted on understanding guitar chord progressions. And in those lessons, I did explain uh, how you can figure out the chords for a song if you knew the key uh, and the scale. Uh, but then the question uh, comes back, how do you find out the key? Now, uh, there is no easy answer for this. Uh, over a period of time with practice, you can learn to uh, pick, it up, pick, pick up the key on your own by uh, training your ear. But uh, there are some rules, there are some basic principles, and I'm going to share them with you in this lesson. And hopefully this will become a series of lessons uh, in which I'll take you through uh, popular songs, uh, show you uh, how you can uh, pick up the key and understand what scale is being played and then figure out the chords. Uh, but again, as I said, these rules are just uh, you know basic concepts, basic principles. Uh, uh, there are situations where these rules will be broken. There are situations where uh, you know the musician or the composer will do something which is totally unexpected. So be prepared for that as well. But we'll go through first easy examples so that you get your basics right. Now, before we begin the lesson, uh, there are a few things which I would expect that you already know. And if you are not familiar with these concepts, uh, or if you're just a beginner, you know, you should go back and get those concepts clear. Then you will be, uh, be able to make the most effective use of these lessons. Um, uh, the first thing that you should know is the names of the notes. It's quite obvious. Uh, so we will be using uh, Western uh, music notation most of the time. So you should know what is A, what is B, what is C and so on. Uh, where they are played on the guitar. I'm not really worried about which position you're going to play them in. We're not going to do solo lessons. We're not going to do a lot of strumming lessons. We're not going to uh, try and understand various uh, shapes and patterns. But as long as you can identify which note is A, which note is B, and again, we'll uh, make sure that your guitar is in tune with mine, which is the standard tuning, so that you can play along with me and understand what I'm saying. Uh, that should be good. From time to time, I'll also be referring to uh, Hindustani music uh, notation. So, uh, uh, as you know, in uh, in Hindustani music, we don't have fixed uh, names for notes. Uh, the, no, the we use a movable system. So, uh, the first note or the key note is always, uh, and then you follow that with re and ga and so on and so forth. So, for some of you who are familiar with that, uh, those concepts, I will refer to those names. It would be good if you understand that as well, because a lot of Indian songs are based on traditional Indian uh, ragas. And uh, that's where you know knowledge of these uh, names, uh, these concepts will also help. But again, if you don't, that's also fine as long as you're able to understand the note names A, B, C, C sharp, D, D sharp, and so on. The next thing which you need to know, uh, and that's important as well, is uh, the, the the basic chords. You know, the major and minor chords. At least we will try to stick with mostly major and minor chords. Try try not to make the lesson complicated. Not initially, at least. Maybe in future lessons we might look at more exotic chords like seventh chords and sixth chords and minor sixths and diminished and so on. But initially if you can at least ensure that you know the major and minor chords uh, and uh, it would be also good if you know the notes which are in the chord. So for example if you refer to a C major chord you should be able to play the C major chord. Again doesn't matter which position you, you could play it as an open chord, you could play it as a bar chord, you could use a capo and play it somewhere else on the fretboard, don't really care. Uh, but you should know, it would be good to know that C major consists of the notes C, E and G, D minor consists of the notes D, F and A and so on. So there are 12 notes and uh, for each note there would be a major chord and a minor chord. It would be wonderful if you can play all of those 24 chords, 12 major and 12 minor chords. Uh, that way it will be easier for, to, for you to follow these lessons. Um, the third and probably the most important thing is for you to be able to identify a note. So when you listen to a song, uh, you, you should be able to play back the individual uh, uh, parts of the melody 
uh, in, uh, with your guitar or for that matter for you with your keyboard you can use these lessons even with the keyboard the concepts are pretty much the same now if you haven't ever done that before you might find it a little difficult initially you can uh, again build that over a period of time with a lot of practice but if you again uh, if you're finding that you're taking a lot of time really it's not because that uh, you know uh, you're not good at being able to pick out notes. I think we are all born with an innate sense of being able to identify notes. And we do that right when we go to school in our, our childhood. So you go to nursery and you learn nursery rhymes like, you know, Jack and Jill or Twinkle, Twinkle Little Star or whatnot. So you hear somebody singing that and you're able to sing it back. Now, if you can do that, I think most of us can do that, or at least were able to do that, and then we stopped uh, singing or stopped following melodies later on in life, uh, essentially what you're doing is you're identifying a note and you're able to reproduce it with your voice. Now, we all have that ability, but when it comes to doing that with a musical instrument, we find it a little difficult, uh, especially with the guitar, because a stringed instrument, uh, when, it, when you pluck a string, the sound it makes, it's not close to the human voice. So the brain takes time, it takes a little bit of time to figure that out and uh, to process that sound and be able to kind of map it back to the sound which it heard in the song. So if you're finding it very difficult, you could try using a, a keyboard sound like a violin, which is very close to the human voice, or even a harmonium uh, if you have one. Uh, if, you, if, you, if you can do that, so you know, uh, sing aloud a uh, melody line or maybe just sing, sing a part of a song and try to play that note on the music instrument, uh, that would be good and uh, if you can do that on the guitar uh, you know even if you are not able to play across the strings in a professional way even you can even if you can identify the notes on a single or a couple of strings as long as you can identify the notes which are being played in the melody uh, that will uh, that will be very important for you to be able to pick out uh, the key because as you as we go along in the series you will see uh, that that is really very important so uh, with these concepts, you know, uh, with these, uh, with, with, with this knowledge, you should be able to make the most of what really is. Uh, uh, keys. What do we mean by the term key? What do we mean by scale and so on? Um, to put it very simply, every song, every melody is built around a, built on a scale, which is really a series of notes. And in all forms of music, typically, uh, every note repeats itself after a series of 12 notes. So when, you, when I say it repeats itself, it actually, it is the same note, but at double the pitch. Uh, so, we, uh, so, so it sounds the same uh, to the ear, but really the, the frequencies uh, keep doubling uh, after every 12 notes. Now there can be more than 12 notes and we will not go into that. Uh, but in standard Western music, in standard Indian music, typically you would have 12 notes. And uh, all the songs are uh, built on scales or a series of notes, which are a subset of these 12 notes. Typically it would be a, a set of 7 notes. It, uh, it could be less, it could be 6, it could be 5, those are known as pentatonic scales. Uh, so most songs are built around these uh, series of five, six, and seven notes, and as I said, uh, the series keeps repeating itself uh, um, because the pitch keeps doubling for every note. So, for example, if you have a scale uh, starting with, let's say, the note uh, C, uh, you move on from C to D, E, F, G, A, B, and then you land again on C. That neck, that C is essentially double the pitch of the first, the previous C, and then you keep moving up. And in Hindustani music, it doesn't matter whether you start from C or from D, uh, the first note is always known as Sa, and then you move on to Re and Ga and so on and so forth. Uh, we'll, we'll come to the sharps and flats and in Indian music, the komal swars and the tivar swars, we'll come to that a little later. But for now, let's just take a look at a scale um, built on C. So when I say built on C, so it starts with C, so that is the key note. Uh, that is the first note, and Western music is also known as the tonic note. In Indian music, it's known as just the sa. Uh, every song which is built on a on the key in the key of C, 
uh, will have a melody line which will keep coming back to that C at certain points in the song. Typically, that would be at the end of a verse. It could also happen in between. But uh, uh, the song, the melody line, keeps coming back to that note. And that's why it's called the key. It's the tonal center of the uh, melody. It's also, you, you could call it your home note. So you go all around the world, you go everywhere, you come back home all the time. So the easiest way to identify the key of a song is to figure out the notes being played for, let's say, the first, the main verse that is in uh, Indian music, you would call that the mukra or the sthai. And try and play those notes. And assuming that your guitar is tuned uh, in standard tuning, Take the last note of the main verse, that note would almost always be, not almost always, most of the time it would be uh, the key note. It could also be the fifth note of the scale. Uh, by and large you will find most songs ending on the key or the fifth note of the scale built on the key. Uh, it could also end on the third note. But for now, let's just look at examples of songs um, ending on uh, the note which happens to be the key. Let's take a look at some songs and see how uh, to figure out the key of uh, the song and then going from that figure out the scale and the chord. Before we uh, take a look at uh, some of those concepts uh, let's just make sure that our guitars are in sync so you know this is standard tuning so the first string here is E if you could tune along with my guitar that's the second string third, fourth, fifth and six strings. So the six string is an E. So this is the standard tuning. Let's take a look at the song Papa Kehte Hain. I've already posted a detailed lesson on this song before, so you would know that this uh, song is in the uh, key of C and you'd already know the chords for the song. But let's say you didn't know that, how would you figure it out? So if you play the melody line of this uh, song, that's the Mukhra, the main verse, it starts with the that's where it starts off. So if you go on to play the rest of the melody lines in the mukhra, it would end something like uh, this. So that last note here, this was a C. And that tells you what the key of the song is. Typically, most songs will end with the key for their mukhras. And we'll take a look at some songs which don't, but most songs do. So that tells you what the first note or the key of the song is. And pretty much this entire song kind of stays with this, except in the interlude, in the second interlude, it kind of moves to the key of A minor. And we won't go into the technical details here, but A minor is a relative to C major, so it kind of retains the same chord structures. Um, but this is the key of the song. So what do we do next? The next thing is to kind of play all of the notes in the mukhra and figure out what the other notes are. So we started here. This is the note E. This is the note B. So we know that there are three notes C, D and E. C, D and E. This is G. A. Back to C. G, A, back to C. So you know that the, uh, the, the song also contains the notes G and A. So this note is F, back to E, D. So you also know the note, the F exists. And somewhere in the song you will also find that this note here, which is the note B, is also there in the song. So uh, we won't go into playing the entire song here, but if you play the melody lines in the song, you will find that it has the notes uh, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, and then back to C again. Now, if you place these uh, uh, on a sheet of paper, maybe, uh, and you uh, look at the first note being C, you would realize that this is the major scale, the diatonic major scale, uh, built on the key of C, which has the notes C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. This is equivalent to the Bilawal Thad in Indian music which has the note Sare Gama Padha Nisa, where all the swars are Shuddh. So now we know the key and the scale. Let's try and understand how we uh, identify the chords. Uh, a chord, as you know, contains of three notes, right? So for example, C major contains the notes C, E and G. 
So technically speaking, um, when you are playing a melody line, if you want to play a chord uh, at a particular point, if the note over there is C, you could play the C major chord. I mean, we are looking at a song built on the C scale, so you could play C major. You could also play the note, the, uh, the chord C major when the note is E. You could also play the chord C major when the note is G. On the other hand, if the note was C, there are three chords which you could play. You could play C major because that contains the note C. You could play A minor because that also contains the note C. You could also play F major because that also contains the note C. And that's exactly what has happened in the song Papa Kehte Hain. In, uh, uh, in the original composition, in the beginning of the song, uh, the note kind of keeps coming back to C, uh, but the composers have used three chords, C, a minor and F. You could have chosen to just play C. It will still sound fine, but you may not get the original feel of the song. So, well, the question you might ask is then, you know, which chord should you play? Now, if you are playing along with other musicians and uh, if you are playing to a crowd where you want to produce the original uh, mood of the song, it's important that you play the song, the chords which were played in the song originally. Uh, and that requires a lot of practice. Uh, uh, practice to your ear actually, you've got to listen to the chords being played in the song very carefully and you know sometimes you cannot hear the chords being played because there are no chords being played, maybe there is just a, a bass guitar playing the bass lines then you need to listen to the bass lines. Uh, it comes with uh, some practice and even the best musicians in the world uh, could find it a little difficult to figure out the actual chords which were played by some other musician in a song because it can get compl complex with so many instruments playing at the same time. But let's say if you're just you know uh, practicing and uh, you know uh, playing along uh, uh, with a group of friends, it doesn't really matter if you play uh, the chords, uh, all of the original chords which were played in the song. You could substitute them with chords of your own as long as your chord contains the notes which are there in the scale on which the song is built and the note uh, and the chord when it is played it contains the note which was being sung at that point in time. Typically uh, most songs are built uh, with uh, the chords changing uh, uh, not too frequently so the same chord would last for uh, the pattern of beat so if it's a 4-4 four, four pattern uh, a chord may last for uh, the four beats within the first bar and then it could change to another chord in the second bar and that's what has happened in Papa Kehte Hai it moves from C major to A minor to F uh, whereas you could have actually been playing C major continuously for all those first three bars so for example uh, in this song the song starts off with uh, the first piece so the notes the first note is E of course and then it lands back on C. Both of these notes are contained in the chord uh, C major. They are also contained in A minor and then if it lands on C, C is also there in F major and so what the musician has done in this song is cleverly uh, changed quickly from C major to A minor to F major. You could actually continue playing C major completely uh, for all those pieces and then in the end This note is D. You could play D minor here, but the original song they have played G major. So you could play C major for all the uh, for the most of the melody lines in the mukhra, and then uh, end with G, and then go back to C. But if you follow my lesson, you will find that in the original song they have played C, A minor, F, G, and then back to C again.